Welcome back to the Testudo Talk podcast. And we have a different episode today, a little bit of a reaction episode for some breaking news. It's been a while. We've been waiting for this one for a couple months. There's been a lot of speculation, but Derek Queen, a five-star center, originally from Baltimore, now playing at Montverde Academy down in Florida, has committed to Maryland men's basketball. This is a huge get for Maryland. Uh, this is the second recruit in their 2024 class. But most importantly, this is the second highest rated recruit, at least using the composite rankings by 24-7 sports that the program has ever gotten. Um, he was deciding also with Indiana was in the mix. Uh, Kansas and Houston were also kind of around there in that that final four he was considering. I'm Emmett Siegel, but I'll dish it to Andrew Chodas here. Andrew, your first reactions to you know what amounts to nothing less than a huge get for Kevin Willard here in his second full recruiting class. Yeah, I mean, it's been a wild four months. I think we can both say that covering the team, there's been a tremendous amount of buzz. He's going here, he's going there. Obviously, he's an outstanding player. And I think for for Willard and the entire staff and really the fan base, right, it's some positive momentum in a season that's been really, really tough, right? And I think for Willard specifically, this has been a really frustrating season for him, right? And and I and this is a recruit which you kind of you kind of needed to have, right? Just based on how much they've been, they've been pushing for him. Really, this is the fourth year of that. I mean, this is, and I mean, Mark Turgeon extended an offer, making him making him a priority back in twenty twenty, right? And I and I think what everyone's hoping, really more for the fan base, like I mentioned again, is that this can be a sort of domino effect, right? For Maryland recruiting, the biggest thing is always can you get the top guys from the DMV? And Derek Queen is that guy in the twenty twenty four class. Now, will this lead to a domino effect where Derek Queen's commitment will? kind of make other DMV players say, wow, you know, this is, this is kind of, we want to stay home and it kind of want to leads to this. I, I know there's been some discussions and rumors about some other DMV guys that Derek means commitment may influence. We'll wait and see that, but obviously overall it's extremely positive news for the Terps, the fan base, the coaching staff, and really the players on the team. Yeah. And the other guy that Maryland has locked up uh, in its 2024 class is Malachi Palmer who I believe is a composite four-star, you know, he's around that three-star, four-star range. Um, you know, you don't know necessarily if that guy's going to be a huge difference maker from day one. He certainly doesn't project to be. Um, but, you know, now you have two guys in a class that at one point had nobody, you know, and a lot of the top 2024 class uh, players, the recruits in that class are already committed. So this is probably more or less what the final result is going to be, at least in the high school ranks. But as we know nowadays, that's not necessarily how you have to build your team. You know, you also have the transfer portal. Maryland's going to lose some guys. You know, Jameer Young, Dante Scott really come to mind as guys that are that are leaving out of eligibility. But then you never know with the transfer portal, there are going to be some spots that open up. So, you know, Derek Queen is going to be a piece that uh, Maryland can kind of build around. You pair him and Julian Reese in that, that front court. You have a, a pretty intimidating one-two punch there. Um, you know, who knows if they'll be seeing the court at the same time. There'll be a rotation, whatever it'll be. Um, but I would certainly expect, at least at first glance, that those two will will share uh, starting roles um, down there near the basket. Um, yeah. They're both kind of similar-ish players. I mean, Queen doesn't really step out to the perimeter all too much. Um, but, you know, he's only, what, 18 years old, 17 years old. So, um, you know, he's, he's definitely got time to develop that. But, yeah, I mean, this is nothing short of huge for – um, a team and a program that is really not trending positively in terms of the results on the court that it's been putting forth. Last year, I had a highly ranked recruiting class. Those guys have come in and they've shown flashes, especially they've gotten as, better. I, yeah, they've gotten better and better throughout the season. Exactly. As the season's gone on, they've kind of shown that you know they can be contributors. Deshaun Harris Smith and, and Jamie Kaiser, most most poignantly, um, you know, as guys that have played major roles. Um, but you you had a highly rated recruiting class last year. You know, this class might not necessarily rank all too high on the composite just because of the pure numbers. There's only going to be two guys coming in, you know, but a guy like Derek queen getting a big fish, like you mentioned, and I'll, I'll just reiterate this is that potentially his biggest impact could be the domino effect that he could create, not necessarily in this 2024 class, but then we look forward to uh, a really, really good local 2025 class. And some of the guys that, that Maryland's been after for a long time, this recruitment, you know, Obviously, the Mark Turgeon era did not did not end too well after this, but it kind of reminded me a little bit of the Jalen Smith recruitment where uh, maybe not as much of a slam dunk where Jalen Smith kind of felt like he was always going to come to Maryland. But they're similarly rated recruits, at least, you know, by the by the composite rankings, by the recruiting services, guys that Maryland has been after for a long time, kind of always felt like a Maryland lean. And then Derek Queen, you know, other teams start to get in the mix. You start to have concerns. But at the end of the day, it's kind of a pass fail in the sense that Kevin Willard got the job done. So, you know, he hasn't signed him yet. He'll have to wait a couple months, but you get the commitment from, from a top 15 or so player in the country. And that's just huge. It's, you know, it's his biggest recruit yet. It's probably his biggest win off the court yet. 
uh, maybe other than bringing in Jameer Young. But at the time, we didn't even know what that was. Uh, we didn't know how much of an impact he was going to make. You know, bringing Derek Queen in is just, it's so big for a variety of reasons. But but I really look at the off-the-court stuff as just as important as what he could possibly do for the team next season. Yeah, and I guess specifically on the court, I, I know you mentioned uh, someone to build around. And I think a lot of the discussion this season has been about the roster construction. That's maybe where... Willard fell short. When you get a guy like Derek Queen, that's a, that that's someone who you can how you who you can build a team around, right? And I think it can't be, you know, overstated. This guy is one of the best players in the country. Maryland hasn't gotten one of those guys really since a Jalen Smith, uh, since a Diamond Stone, and I think this is just huge, right? And I you mentioned the Julian Reese part of Julian Reese decides to come back to Maryland for his senior year. If you, if you can put forth a front court like that, I mean, that is potential to be one of the best in the Big Ten. Uh, if if not in the country, but the on the court, like like I mentioned, has the potential to be huge. But off the court, like you said, in the era of NIL when Maryland struggled a little bit, I think we you know we can admit that getting a guy of his caliber, you know, who's currently at at, at Montverde, who's twenty eight and zero, him and Cooper Flag, who's the number one recruit in the nation, have been just like ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I think Queens averaging a seventeen point double double, and, and Cooper Flag is like the neck <laughs> is supposed to be like like the next great NBA. A prospect um but yeah it's 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 huge for maryland i know i've been talking to some people who have said this can legit just getting his commitment off the court can legitimately change the trajectory of maryland men's basketball i think that that that's a bit much but needless to say this is very positive for the fan base the players and the coaching staff and we'll see what happens when he does arrive in college park what he looks like on the court as a freshman but you know, guys that are ranked where he is are, you know, potentially building blocks for a program, but not necessarily the kind of guys that you would think are going to be one and done are the guys that you can really, you know, from year one, like a guy like Cooper flag that you're looking at is like, could be, you know, Duke's best player next year yeah. could like, you know, lead them to a final four kind of guy. I'm not sure that Derek queen is that guy from the jump. Maybe he can develop into that. That's, I think what you're hoping for, but you know, what, what Derek queen can bring is, you know, some, some stability to a front court that is, you know, it's Maryland's best player next year. We don't necessarily know what's going to happen in the transfer portal. And, you know, we have to use that disclaimer every time we talk about it nowadays, but you know, it's probably going to be Julian Reese with Jameer Young leaving. So, you know, you add Derek queen in there that could potentially alleviate a little bit of pressure from him. Most, most importantly though, it could take a little bit of pressure away from whoever you're bringing in to replace that Jameer Young role. Maybe take a little bit of pressure away from a guy like Deshaun Harris Smith, who probably have more ball handling responsibilities next year. Just getting a guy like that, especially a local guy is huge. And, you know, on the court, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting him, you know, and this is, we're way out now. We're still in the middle of this season. You know, he, he hasn't even finished his high school season, but you know, since, since we're doing the, the projecting, I'll just say, you know, I think that, that he should be a solid player from day one, the kind of guy that can start as a freshman, not necessarily, you know, I'm not necessarily expecting him to have that, you know, Jalen Smith impact where he steps up and is immediately, you know, one of the best te- uh, best players on the team, but you know, maybe he will be, he has that kind of athleticism, that kind of potential. And when you look at him, he's kind of the perfect guy that I think can, you can get nowadays where he'll stick around for a couple of years. You know, he's a local guy and with, with Maryland, we know, we talked about the NIL. I think, you know, you you really just can't overemphasize how big it is to get a guy like Derek queen when schools like Indiana, who, you know, is obviously struggling like Maryland is, and, you know, maybe even more, I mean, Indiana, you know, is obviously in a tough place, but has, you know, ton of history and a ton of NIL money. And then programs like Kansas and Houston that are perennial, you know, final four contenders. We know what kind of money Kansas can throw around Houston as well. You know, the kind of development those programs can do for Maryland to get a guy like that. You know, it's the kind of guy that you can sell to other recruits as, you know, we have guys like Derek queen that want to come here. You know, why shouldn't you, right? There's no recruit now that you can, that can make the pitch to Maryland with a straight face and say, well, you know, you haven't gotten a guy like Matt Caliber. You know, that this 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 kind of does change that perception a little bit. You know, like I said, this isn't, you know, the most loaded recruiting class as a whole in terms of numbers, but but getting a guy like that to really anchor it, it totally changes everything in terms of fan perspective and then like I said, recruits perspective and with the transfer portal coming up, you get another local guy in there, just really reiterates, you know, that message that Kevin Willard is trying to send, and I think it's just going to be huge and we're probably going to see the impacts of it in my estimation, really right as the season ends, when yeah. guys start entering the transfer portal and, you know, you can start pitching that, you know, you're going to be able to play with a guy like Derek Queen potentially for a couple of years. 
Yeah, no, I, I think that's the big thing. I think that, you know, rumors are kind of swirling about Maryland's kind of looking for a few guys in the portal. And it's all they, they are. I mean, five of, of Kevin Willard's six recruits, not not portal gets, have been from the DMV, right? So I think he's slowly establishing a kind of that, bringing Maryland back, not as a powerhouse in the DMV, but something that a school that, that can provide almost a safe haven, right, for, for some of the top DMV players. And like you mentioned again, right, I think the impact is going to be felt even months before the season. Like there's going to be guys, important guys that see, all right, Queen Queen went here when he had offers from Houston and Kansas and Indiana. Maybe that's, that's momentum and I can make an impact here as well. I and mean, I think the fact that we're talking about a five-star guy, his impact off the court – being so immense, I think that's a really good thing for Maryland. It's almost like it's almost like you're dismissing how talented he is. So there is absolutely nothing negative uh, about this commitment, and not to speculate, but I think his involvement in Under Armour and playing with Julian Reese and Jonathan Lamoth absolutely helped in this decision. Going to speculate that Kevin Plank and, and Under Armour probably gave some NIL money, but yeah, just a lot of positives around this, and, and a huge get for Kevin Willard and the Turks. Well, that's exactly why I think it's so important that you get a guy like this. And I mean, it's almost, it's, you know, I know these are synonyms, but it's almost just as, as, as important that you got him as it is that you didn't lose him, you yeah, know, right. getting a guy like a, a five-star recruit that seems to be favoring you the whole way. And then to have him snatch out of your hands at the last minute for whatever it may be, it may be NIL, it may be, you know, style of play, whatever it is. To, to lose a guy like that is is really demoralizing, especially, you know, the, the way the on the court results have gone this year for Maryland, you know, making sure that you can hold on to a guy like that. It helps build a little bit of optimism for the future. And, you know, like I said, it kind of just it, it, it reinvigorates you a little bit in looking, you know, at the at the future prospects of what the Kevin, Kevin Willard era, you know, could hold. I think, you know, like you said, Kevin Plank, guys like that, you know, the big donors, the NIL, wherever it's coming from, you know, like Maryland has has lost guy. I mean, you know, we talk about like Hunter Dickinson, we talked about him a bunch, you know, on the site and, and here on the podcast, like, you know, losing a guy like Hunter Dickinson, probably not entirely to, to NIL purposes. I mean, you know, going to Kansas, hard to blame a guy for that, but I mean, Kansas is paying him a lot of money to do that. And there, there's, there's, there's a lot of recruits out there that Maryland has had to get on a hometown discount. I don't know if that's the situation with Derek queen. We don't know, you know, the, the internal deliberations with him and his family and whatever it may be. And you know, how much money played a factor in, but you know, to like I said, to beat programs like Indiana, Kansas, you know, I don't know exactly what Houston's NIL situation is, but we know they have an outstanding program. And I'm sure, you know, Kelvin Sampson's never been afraid to throw around money towards a recruit. Like it's it's huge for Maryland just for the perception of what people think about it as a real player in this modern era of college basketball. You know, it's just it we've repeated it a bunch of times, but I just have to keep saying it, you know, like what what it'll do for making this offseason a little bit more exciting for fans for you know after after this year you know if they struck out a little bit in the transfer portal the way this season has gone it would be really easy to just look at Kevin Willard and just say this thing is not going the right direction immediate hot seat and now he buys himself a little bit of a leash obviously you still have to prove that it's going to work on the court you know just getting a guy with the title you know five star doesn't doesn't you know get you a new contract or whatever it may be but but just getting that title in getting people excited about seeing the Terps play you know, kind of reiterating this DMV focus. Um, it, it's just, it's just so big. And, you know, I talked about Jalen Smith, another guy that, that comes to mind is Mellow Trimble. Um, you know, being from around here, I can remember when Mellow Trimble committed to Maryland and how big of a deal it was, you know, being like the all met player of the year for two years, you know, playing at Bishop O'Connell, like getting a guy like that, considering where Maryland was as a program with Mark Turgeon, trying to get it to the next level, you know, Mellow Trimble meant a ton to this program you know, even if he didn't necessarily, you know, get any huge postseason accomplishments or anything like that, you know, a guy like Derek Queen, you hope that he can have a similar impact where you can kind of point to him and say he was one of the catalysts of helping turn around the program back to the the heights it wants to get, you know, getting Maryland back to the national reverence that it we know it can be at, that it has been at even in recent years to the point where maybe getting guys or even being in the mix for guys like Derek Queen is not a surprise. And you don't have to say, wow, I can't believe you got a recruit like him over Kansas or Indiana, where you can just be like, that's the norm. You know, Maryland's in the mix. Maybe he'll choose him. That's at least, you know, my my, my take on the on the situation. Yeah, I, I've got nothing else. I th think I said enough. Uh, been a crazy six months. Uh, glad, glad as a reporter, it's finally coming to a close. And just again, just, just a huge get and a huge moment for Maryland. Absolutely. Huge for, for Maryland, huge for Kevin Willard. 
um, you know, potentially huge for the, for this roster next year that, you know, we'll be keeping everyone updated on and how that all plays out. We'll see. There's obviously still a lot of dominoes to fall, but, uh, but if that's all you have to say, I'll sign off and just say, thanks everyone for listening. Um, we appreciate your, uh, your listeners as, as always, you guys are great. Uh, we really appreciate the support and, uh, yeah, really exciting get for Maryland. We'll be keeping everyone up to date here on the podcast and over at testudotimes.com and all everything that happens with Maryland basketball, other Maryland sports, Maryland football had some news. They announced their, their pro day and spring day. You know, it's crazy to believe we're already kind of uh, getting into the, the, the mix of another uh, football season here in February. Um, but whatever it is, Maryland related, we'll keep you guys updated. Thanks so much for listening.